So the Interactive Media Initiative is a research center here at the Wharton School. Uh, now, there's a lot of research centers around the world that focus on the media industry, but this one has a very tight, very narrow focus on the data. We're less interested in the media part. We see the media as a medium that gives us access to customer-level behavior. A lot of the research that I do and other colleagues here and those associated with the Wharton Interactive Media Initiative, uh, we're looking at customer-level data. So it's a big distinction. We're not just looking at how much companies are spending on advertising or how many sales they're getting as a result of a particular ad campaign. We want to drill it down to the granular customer level. That's where all the action is. That's where the rubber meets the road, where exposure to a, to a particular ad is going to actually change behavior. When we look at that across customers and understand how these patterns vary across customers and over time, that's when we get the richest possible understanding of the impact that media has on customer behavior. So in doing that, we're agnostic about particular industries or particular platforms. So in the media space, whether we're talking about the internet, whether we're talking about television, whether we're talking about mobile, we don't care. To us, it's all just customer level data. Or more broadly, whether we're talking about customers interacting with media, or customers shopping in a grocery store, or doing things with financial services or pharmaceuticals, we like to strip away a lot of the surface level characteristics and focus only on the behavior and look for relevant patterns there. And when we do that, we find there's some surprising similarities even when we look across seemingly unrelated domains. One of our interesting new projects is we attached radio frequency transmitters, RFID tags, to grocery carts. And we watched the way the carts went up and down the aisles of the store, and we related that to the purchases that people made. We built some models to try to predict who's going to turn left, who's going to turn right, are they going to buy something or not. It was a lot of fun, very interesting, very original. But when we took a step back, and we looked at the kinds of patterns that we observed and how they change across customers in different kinds of shopping contexts, we said, you know what, this isn't as new as we thought. We find that there's very similar patterns when we look at customer paths in other domains. So one example would be online. As you look at people browsing from one web page to another, maybe buying something, maybe not, maybe jumping out to a different site, maybe coming back, the basic patterns about how people move around are surprisingly similar whether they're pushing a cart or clicking on a mouse. And more broadly than that, whether it's people walking around, going from store to store in a shopping mall, or even more broadly than that, if we're talking about birds and fish or cars driving around, the basic movement patterns are surprisingly similar. And so it's important to build a single platform to understand broad behavior rather than building separate models, developing separate understandings about each of these domains by itself. Some of the implications of this work suggest that things aren't quite as different as they seem to be. A lot of people are saying it's a whole new world. People have so many more different media options. We can track so many kinds of behaviors that we couldn't track before. But when you strip away all the surface level characteristics and say it's people doing something over time, the way that they do those things and the way that they react to different kinds of stimuli is surprisingly similar. So in many ways, I'm kind of a, an old school, flat earth kind of guy saying that, for instance, the role of advertising isn't really any different today than it was 10 or, or 20 years ago. The basic idea is just to get the word out, shout real loudly, get as many people as possible to hear the message, remind them that, hey, it's time to, to buy things. The basic role that advertising played in our lives decades ago is pretty similar to the way it is today. If people keep trying to invent new things just because they can, because technology enables it. I think a lot of the new advertising initiatives that we're seeing aren't necessarily worth their weight. They're cool, they're interesting, but they don't necessarily change the way that people respond to different kinds of ad advertising stimuli.